In today's video, I wanted to talk about tensegrity. Now, what is tensegrity? Tensegrity means tensional integrity. It's also known as floating compression. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about how this tensegrity model relates to the body. Now this is becoming more of a popular model in which we can go about looking at the body and kind of using it as a framework as to how to approach training. So if we look at a tensegrity structure, really what we're looking at is a model that interacts cohesively with one another. Meaning that if I pull on one point of the structure, we can see how the whole structure has to somewhat accommodate around that. And the same is true in our body. If there is one joint, we'll say that's out of alignment, that we can see the repercussions of how that might create some level of asymmetry on our opposing side. Now something that is important to keep in mind as it relates to a tensegrity model, in a perfect world, a tensegrity structure would be perfectly symmetrical on either side. Now due to our inherent makeup structurally of how our organs are laid out and other things within our body, we are intrinsically asymmetrical beings. So to find a perfectly symmetrical base to work from um, isn't something that's entirely possible, nor should it be something that you are striving towards because you're trying to aim towards something that is somewhat unattainable within our body. That being said, there is a level of tensegrity or a level of foundation that we can try to search for using kind of this tensegrity model. Now, what that means is if we say that I have one shoulder that's higher than the other, we can see how the opposing side of the body is likely going to get pulled down as a result of that. Now, just because this occurs, this doesn't inherently mean that it is a bad thing for our body, but it is something that we may want to pay attention to as it may not be creating necessary or may not be creating efficiency uh, within our movement or within our mechanics on a day to day basis. So if I'm dealing with, we'll say a shoulder that's higher, what I'm really looking at is not so much this shoulder itself, but how is the opposing side of my body kind of playing into that? And what is it that I can do on the opposing side of my body to somewhat get me back to more of a neutral base? Maybe not perfectly neutral like you see here, but more of a neutral base. Now, that is one way of kind of looking at these different points on the model is really just as kind of different joints in our body interacting with one another. But one thing that isn't commonly talked about within the tensegrity model as it relates to the body is this idea of floating compression. Now, this is something that is really interesting because if we look at this structure and I compress it, we can see all the elastics kind of move in towards one another. Now, if I just simply let this go, not pull it apart, but just let it go, we can see its form comes back to kind of this foundational base. So within our bodies, what we can start to think about is how can we create some level of central stability or central compression within our body, and then to kind of ease or move our way away from that center point. And what is the de degree of compression that I need to get myself to a more even placement of decompression? Now that's one way to approach this. Another way to look at this is almost as a reflexive system, right? So I can do this, I can just press this in, that'd be me actively compressing my body. If I just let it go, there should be love, some level of space that gets created from that. Now, we aren't static beings, we interact with the environment around us. So what we can utilize with this floating compression concept is really looking at if I close off or come into a more compressed state, what type of rhythm or elasticity is going to be involved in my body in order for me to go through a certain range of motion? Because ideally using this model and interacting with the environment around us, there is gonna be kind of this loading and unloading effect that happens. But it all really occurs from this central point of stability that is created. Now, if I don't have a healthy or efficient um, point of stability at my center point, then what might happen is I might do something like this and then I'll come back this way. 
or I might come all the way down and then back up. And it's just one side of my body that is kind of dominating the movement. So this is one approach in which we can take to looking at our body in a more integrated or a more holistic way. Um, this is a really great model that I personally use on myself as well as have used on my clients for the past few years. And I found it to be really helpful, more or less just trying to look at how things relate to one another, not so much how just one specific joint moves in isolation, but really kind of this relativity factor. If one joint moves, how does my body accommodate around that? And what is the tendency within my body through that certain type of motion? So that is one way that we can begin to look at training in a different way that isn't necessarily, necessarily as conventional as this more kind of isolated approach. So if you found this video helpful, you can be sure to like this video as that really helps. And you can also subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. I plan to do more educational pieces as well as what this model actually looks like in practice when we go into a workout or a corrective exercise. So until next time, make sure you are prioritizing and then you are optimizing for you. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.